So let's find out the area of a triangle. We begin by considering an acute angle triangle with vertices A, B, and C. Now to find the area of the triangle, we need the base that we have with the base, which is BC, and we also need the perpendicular or the altitude of the triangle. To do that, all we'll do is drop a perpendicular from the vertex A to line BC or to the side BC. We're going to name it AD. So AD is going to be perpendicular on BC. So this immediately gives us two right angle triangle ADB and ADC. So let's uh, consider the right angle triangle, the, the uh, ADC. Now, if we take sine of the angle C, then we know by definition sine C that is the ratio of the perpendicular, which is AD, over the hypotenuse, which is AC. Now that means AD will be equals to AC times sine C. Now, we know that the area of a triangle, so area of triangle ABC, so that's going to be equals to half times base times the altitude. We have the value of the base, uh, so the base is given by BC, and the altitude will be AD. So AD is AC times sine C. Now since it's a triangle, we can also define its sides. Now let's consider the side opposite to angle A, which is BC. We're going to represent it by the letter A in lower case. Then the side opposite to angle B, which is AC, will be represented by the letter B in lower case. And finally, the side opposite to angle C will be represented by the letter C in lower case. So using this value, we get half multiplied to A times the AC value, which is B. We have AB times sine C. And now that we have this uh, area, we can also define in terms of the other side. So we are going to get half. The notice here that whenever we are considering the side A and B, we are using the angle between the sides A and B. So we have here sine of that angle C. Then if we choose the angle uh, side B and C, so it will be multiplied to sine of the angle between the side B and C, which is angle A. And the third one will be, the third way of representing the area of the triangle will be half A times C and multiplied to sine of the angle between them, which is B. So this is the area of the triangle ABC. Now let us apply this formula. Problem number one, we need to find out the area of a triangle with sides. 5 and 6, and one of the angle is 60 degree. Here, the information is not quite complete. So we'll have to assume that the angle 60, so let's say we have a triangle, then if we consider one of the angle to be 60 degrees, then this particular angle is lying between the sides, five uh, sides with length 5 and 6 units. So now we can find out the value with the uh, that we can find out easily find out the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle will be given by half multiplied to the two sides, product of the two sides, times sine of the angle between them, which is 60 degree. So we have 6 times 5, so that's 30 over 2, and 60 sine 60 degree, that's square root of 3 over 2. So that means our angle will be 15 square root of 3 over 2 square units. So that's going to be the area of the given triangle. So here in this particular problem, we need to find out the area of a triangle having sides square root of 2, square root of 3, and square root of 5. So let's consider a random triangle. We have the sides given by square root of 5, 2, square root of 3, and square root of 5. We're going to name this triangle as A, B, and C. And we're also going to name the sides so the side opposite to angle A, let it be represented by the letter A. So that means we have A, which is square root of 2 units. Then the side opposite to angle B, that has a value of square root of 3. So we are going to represent it by the letter B in lowercase. And the third side AB, which is the side opposite to angle C, we're going to represent it by the letter C in lowercase. Right. Now that we have the sides of the triangle, we have to find out the area of the triangle. However, to find out the area, we know that we need at least two sides and one of the angle lying between those two adjacent sides. But in our case here, we are only provided with the sides of the triangle. 
but that's okay uh, that's fine we can easily find out uh, the angle by using either the law of sines or using the law of cosine so let's uh, use the law of cosines so here we have the triangle abc with sides given by a b c in lowercase and they are the sides opposite angle a b and c respectively then we can define cosine of a cosine of b and cosine of c in terms of the respective sides as given by the formula here so let's use the law of cosines to find out the value of cosine c so cosine c we have a squared so our a value that's square root of 2 whole squared plus we have b squared the so b value is square root of 3 so we have square root of 3 whole squared minus the third side which is c squared so we have square root of 5 whole squared divided by 2 times a times b now in the numerator we have square root of 2 whole squared plus square root of 3 whole squared so that's 2 plus 3 so 2 plus 3 is 5 5 minus 5 is 0 so we have a 0 in the numerator so this value is going to be equals to 0 now we know that if cosine of some angle is 0 that would mean that the c measure must be equals to 90 degrees so that means this is actually a right angle triangle now do we have the value of angle c which came out to be 90 degree then our area will be given by half so we will take side bc and multiply it to ac and we'll take sine of the angle between them which is 90 degrees so we have half multiplied to bc so bc is square root of 2 ac value is square root of 3 and sine 90 degree that's 1 so that means our value is going to be square root of 6 over 2 square units. So this is going to be the area of the triangle with sides square root of 2, square root of 3 and square root of 5. So we have a triangle having sides 4 cm and square root of 3 cm. So let's assume that this side is we have the triangle ABC. We assume that AB has a length of 4 cm and AC has a length of square root of 3 cm. And we'll also assume that the angle between them is 60 degrees. Then we can find out the area. So area will be given by half multiplied to 4 cm times the other side, which is square root of 3 cm, multiplied to sine of the angle between them, which is 60 degrees. So we have the 2 times 2 is 4. So we have 2 cm multiplied to square root of 3 cm times sine 60 degree, which has a value of square root of 3 over 2. So here 2 and 2 gets factored out and we have square root of 3 times square root of 3 which is simply 3 and our units will be centimeter squared. So the area of this triangle is 3 centimeter square. So let's move on to the next problem. Here in problem number 4 we need to show that in any triangle its area will be always given by b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by 4 times cotangent of a. Well, let us begin. Now in order to solve this problem we will be taking the help of the law of cosines. So let's first state the law of cosines. So if we have any triangle ABC then the law of cosine states as cosine of angle A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC, where A, B and C in lowercase represents the sides opposite angle A, B and C respectively. Similarly, we can define cosine of angle B as well as cosine of angle C. Now, let's say we start by considering the uh, cosine of angle A. So, we know we have cosine of angle A, so that's given by b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by 2 times b c so if we cross multiply it so we're going to get 2 times b c times cosine of angle a so this will be equals to b squared plus c squared minus a squared now let's do one thing let's uh, divide both sides of this equation with sine of a so we get 2 times b c times cosine of a divided by sine a similarly we will also divide the right hand side which is b squared plus c squared minus a squared with sine of a now this is done because the ratio cosine over sine we have uh, we can be also represented as the cotangent function so we get cotangent of a that will be equals to b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by sine a now we're going to cross multiply with sine a and we're going to divide both sides with cotangent of a this is going to give us 2 times bc times sine a which will be equals to b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by cotangent of 
a. Now, we have an expression b squared plus c squared minus a squared over cotangent of a into denominator, but we also need to have the factor 4. So we're going to divide both sides with 4. So on the right and left hand side, we're going to get half because uh, 2 divided by 4 will be half. bc times sine of angle a. So this will be equals to b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by 4 times cotangent of a. Now, what is this uh, half BC times sine of it? This is nothing but the area of the triangle ABC. So we have shown that the area of the triangle is given by B squared plus C squared minus A squared divided by 4 times cotangent of A. Hence proved. Let's move on to the next problem. Now in order to solve this problem, we'll have to use the law of sines. So let's state the law of sines. So the law of sine states that if we have a triangle with vertices A, B and C, and the sides opposite to angle A, B and C will be represented by the letter A, B and C respectively in lowercase, then the law of sine states that the ratio of side A to that of sine of the angle opposite to side A, this is equals to the ratio of side B to that of sine of the angle opposite to it, and it is also equals to the ratio of the third side C to that of sine of the angle opposite to it. So let's use this. Now to do what we'll do, we will assume that let these three ratios be equals to a constant, let's call it lambda. Then we can represent A as equivalent to lambda times sine of angle A. Then B will be equals to lambda times sine of angle B. And C will be equals to lambda times sine of angle C. So we'll start out with our given expression. So here we have A squared minus B squared divided by 2 or multiplied to sine of a times sine of b divided by sine of a minus b so this will be equals to now in place of a and b we can replace with lambda times sine a and lambda times sine b so we're going to get lambda squared multiplied to sine squared a minus sine squared b now this is sine of a minus b whole divided by 2 multiplied to sine of angle a times sine of angle b divided by sine of angle A minus B. Fine. So this will be equals to lambda squared multiplied to. Now sine of sine squared A minus sine squared B, that's an identity with the value sine of A plus B times sine of A minus B, which will be multiplied to sine of A times sine of B whole divided by 2 times sine of a minus b. Now we can factor out sine a minus b from the numerator and the denominator. So that leaves us with lambda squared multiplied to sine a plus b, sine of a plus b times sine of a times sine of b, all divided by which will be equals to, so we have half multiplied to lambda times, so we're breaking down lambda, and breaking down lambda is uh, the product of lambda timed with itself, and we're going to combine this lambda with sine of a, so we have lambda times sine of a, and the other lambda with sine of b, to get lambda times sine of b, and we have the third uh, element, which is sine of a plus b. The reason why we wrote in this particular fashion, now we can replace lambda sine a and lambda sine b with a and b, So this is going to give us half, multiply to a times b times sine of a plus b. Now, we know that in any triangle, in any given triangle a, b, c, we know that the sum of the interior angles a, b, and c, they sum up to pi radians, meaning a plus b can be also expressed as pi minus c. And if we take the sine of the angle on both sides, then sine of a plus c a plus b will be equals to sine of a pi minus c. Now sine of pi minus c, that's simply sine of the angle c. So we can say that sine of angle a plus b is equivalent to sine c. So we can replace this value of sine of a plus b with sine c. And we are going to get half a b times sine of angle c. Now we can say here that let's say we have a triangle with sides a, b and c where the opposite sides, I mean sides opposite angle A, B and C are represented by A, B and C respectively. Then if we take half of the product of side A and side B and it multiplied to the sine of the angle between them, this gives us nothing but the area of the triangle A, B, C. 
Hence, we have successfully shown that for any triangle, the area will be given by a squared minus b squared over 2 times sine a times sine b over sine of a minus b. Hence, proved.